Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. We have made it through another week. So, uh, yeah, happy Friday everybody. We are looking at a saw that I picked up on eBay uh, about a week ago. Uh, I've got a, a, 30, a 350 SL in my collection already, but uh, as you can see, it's a chain brake model. And it just was clean enough that I uh, haven't worked on one of these for a while. And I thought this would be a really neat saw for me to have... Uh, all cleaned up and, and ready to, for someone's collection. Uh, kind of thing I'd like to list in my store. So, I looked at it this morning briefly before heading off to work and uh, kind of figured out a few things that it needs. But uh, this uh, video will probably be a little longer than most, and we may have to break this up into multiple parts. I uh, thought I'd go through this one start to finish with you guys. So one of the first things I like to do with any chain brake model is make sure it's complete. And you guys can see most of it's here. Handles there. Big spring down there. Cams here. But there's no band. <clears throat> now looking through the IPLs, it appears that Homelite did not intend this band to be replaceable without replacing that whole actuator arm. Well, that particular part isn't very common, but I do have some bands. <coughs> excuse me for the the later 360 versions that uh, you could just replace it, and I'm thinking can drive that pin out and put this band in. But we'll find out in a little bit. Kind of want to go through some of the other stuff that it needs before we get too deep into that. The advertisement indicated that uh, the saw <clears throat> needed fuel system work, that you could prime it and it would fire and die real quick, which is fairly consistent with the saw that's been sitting around. Uh, I like to test for compression. This has lots, but you hear that weird clank? Probably can't see, yeah, get it to focus. See how the clutch shoe back there is moving all over? It's got the S-clutch. And I'm going to guarantee that that's broken. So we'll just go ahead and pull that cover off right now. And we can confirm that. <clears throat> that was something I didn't have on my list to replace, but... Yep, there it is. Pretty famous for breaking if they were abused. Usually they don't break from just normal use. Not usually. Uh, somebody who's tried to take one off with a screwdriver has found out how easy it is to break one. Uh, they used to have these two holes in the hub right there. This is the factory home light tool. You can buy reproductions of these on eBay. But you want to fit that whenever possible into those holes. Now all we need to do is either hold the flywheel or block the piston and spin that thing off. Uh, we'll hold that for later. <coughs> That's garbage. I'm going to try and keep all this together. I do have a new clutch drum on the way. You got to watch. Uh, there were a, several different clutches and sizes available on these things and the chain brake limits you to you can't upsize this this drum at all so you got to stick with this two and five eighths roughly it's a two and five eighths uh, outside diameter of the clutch so uh, we're missing one of the pins here one of the AV pins that secures the whole tank in place tank and throttle chambers, so I've got one of those set aside over here. That's these things. These, when the mounts get weak, I've seen these pins snap right off, right at the threads right there, so that's something that happens. Uh, she was missing the air filter and the air filter cover. Now, I knew that when I bought it, so I was able to find a, a matching period correct air filter cover. I had an air filter on hand. 
<clears throat> there's two versions of these. Uh, I believe this part number is A12225 and then the 12225-1. The original version has this second opening right here and that's for the uh, the vent tube for the uh, fuel metering diaphragm that comes up through past the filter here. And then everything will sit down into place like that. The later one, the Dash 1, doesn't have that because they redesigned the carburetor. Another difference on between the 350 and 360, and a few early 360s had this, uh, instead of the threaded stud coming up, this is a push down twist and lock deal. So you just get the filter cover on, line it up, and it's a quarter turn. There she's locked in place. So, anyway, I needed to supply both of those for this filter, or excuse me, for this saw, filter and filter cover. Uh, thr uh, throttle linkage is in good shape. Everything seems to be moving fairly well. I'm noticing that the throttle rod is hitting the back of the pulse hose down in here. That's pretty dark. You guys probably can't see that. But that hose is not routed properly. And it's so stiff. I mean, that is hard as a rock. My guess is it doesn't have... Uh, a good connection down to the cylinder. It's probably not sending a pulse to the carburetor at all. Uh, these do have an intake boot down below this. I am going to assume that it's garbage. Uh, the odds that a saw that's been sitting around that it isn't garbage are fairly slim. The bucking spike is not secured in place properly. There's at least one screw missing. And these early ones actually had you put a screw in from this side and a nut. Now this one has got a screw that's way too long in it and you'll see right here how it's actually come over and banged the fuel tank a couple times and that's movement on the AV mounts. That's natural that they should move but that's why they need clearance in there so don't do stuff like this. That'll punch a hole in your tank and then you either have to patch it or replace it. Neither one is all that terribly fun. So, so with that, those are the things that I've identified that are wrong. Uh, I'm going to say the sprocket. That's in the mail. I'm going to have to find a clutch. And I don't know that I've got anything rat holed away, so that may be another thing I've got to go out to eBay and, uh, and just see what the heck's out there. But uh, we might as well start some disassembly. So... To do much of anything on these saws, you got to get the handle out of the way. So we're just going to start with that. Oh, I'll be damned. This, these older ones apparently have a 5 16th uh, hex head, so that'll make this a little easier rather than those Allen screws. fashion way. These saws are not hard to work on, but there's a definite order of operations that you should follow in order to make your life a little bit easier. The throttle tank or throttle handle, carburetor chamber, fuel and oil tanks are all one giant assembly. You guys will see that here in a minute. But the other half of what sandwiches this whole damn saw together is this bottom plate right here. 
attaches to the throttle handle and then goes over the top of the tank right here and ties it all together. So this is all one solid package, which is fine, makes for a good saw, but you gotta take it apart in the right order to avoid frustrating yourself. All right, while we're here, I think we'll go ahead and get the starter cover off. And I'm already seeing that somebody has changed out some of these screws, which doesn't enthuse me at all. We'll replace those with the right ones, hopefully, when we come back. It doesn't look like it's the wrong thread. shall find out. Now it's right. Okay. This will all get hosed off. But when you've got, got a starter that's kind of making that that wobbly, rattly noise, it means the bronze bushing is just a little dry. So a little good oil. Smooth as silk. All right, so this is uh, these saws. You guys that have worked on them know that this is a two-piece ignition system. Got your coil next to the flywheel like normal, but then transformers way out here, and it actually bolts over the top of the spark plug. So it makes it rather hard to test the spark on this without just doing a prime. Uh, I didn't do that. I'm just I'm taking the seller at their word that this ignition system is good for now. So, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me when we get it back together. Alright, I want to get this bottom strap off before I go too much further. So, and this is one of those things that you want to be careful of. I'll show you when we get this off. The rubber grip here is holding a square nut in that hole, and that's what that's threading into. This handle's not threaded, it's a nut back there. So if you have trouble getting the, the screw to restart, you might have to take a little all, slip that nut back up where it belongs, and kind of hold it in a position like this until you get everything started. The other thing that's common to misplace or forget about is underneath the handle right here is this muffler uh, heat shield. Just a little piece of reinforced rubber and we'll clean that all up too. But uh, it's meant to keep from basically boiling the fuel with heat from the muffler down here. So we'll flip this thing back up and it's time to get this carburetor out of the way. This plate holds down the little air filter guide. That's the neck that the filter sits on. So you want to make sure not to lose that. <clears throat> All right, so that's nice and loose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this pulse hose loose. Somebody's already replaced the fuel hose. Hopefully that's the right length in there. We'll get that off. And then you got to kind of rotate the carburetor once you free up the grommet here so that you can take the choke and the throttle lever off all at the same basic time. The first time you do this, it can be kind of a pain in the ass uh, just trying to get the sequence right, but once you've done a couple of them, it's, yeah, it's no big deal. Oh, come on. Definitely sealing good. There we go. Alright, so again, you just start rotating this, and basically you, it, it just releases. Now putting that back in is almost that easy. You just have to line it up and get everything started and rotate it properly. We will go through that. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't know what he was using to prime it. But there's some blue residue that makes me think it was it was mix, which is good because starting fluid on a 
a dry engine especially is, is not good that's just pure ether it's going to burn hot fast if you don't have any extra you know oil from your mix left over in there you can score a piston just with a quick blurb like that so all right so we need to get the bucking spike off and it looks like a McCulloch screw which I'm pretty sure it is because you can't rotate the tank out of the way with the spike in place you might as well just get that thing out of the way early and set it aside Probably won't be reusing that screw, but we'll see. Alright, the next thing, there are two screws that are holding this intake plate where the carburetor mounts. Yeah, they hold that to the, the air box and tank assembly here. we got to get those loose. socket on. There we go. Alright. Now, there's four AV pins. But on this one, there's only three, because that one's already missing. So you've got one down here. Should be one there. Another one there. Another one there. So we're going to go ahead and pull those out. Those are a 7 sixteenths head. that because this has a chain break it's got a chain catch on it and that sits right up against there so we gotta get it the heck out of the way too and of course the slots are full of sawdust and oil and gunkity goo we'll get all that cleaned up before reassembling I wish that thing gave me a counter on it no idea how long we've spent on this video, but to me feels like it's the better part of 10 minutes so far. I think that thing cuts me off at a half hour, so we're going to try and keep it under that. I recently upgraded my desktop computer. I still prefer to work from one. And uh, I'm exploring the, the new world of video editing. It's not going to be anything elaborate, but just being able to cut and paste uh, videos together and eliminate a little bit of the garbage so that you guys don't have to put up with that will be nice. These are typically installed, yeah, with a little thread locker. You can see the, the red right there. Because you really don't want one of those damn things backing out while you're using the saw and have it flop to pieces. That's not a scenario that anybody wants. But consequently, the first couple turns, if you're doing it by hand and not using one of these things, it's going to turn hard at first. Those have been out and didn't get re loctited so shame on somebody. Okay, from here, you're just going to start lifting this up and pushing forward. You're going to get your plate to clear, and then it's all academic. Just slide it forward. That's your oil hose. And I didn't check to see if this thing has oil in it. Uh, it looks pretty dry. If you disconnect this with a tank full of oil and you don't loosen the cap, you're going to splurge it all over the place. That's a soft hose. We're going to replace that too. Yeah, so look at all that crap that's in there, the sawdust and oil, and I mean, I've seen far worse, but we're going to get that all cleaned up. That kind of stuff is what contributes to an engine running hotter than it needs to, and we don't want that. Alright. Well, my guess about the carburetor boot was right. This should be all connected, and this little plate... Basically, 
sits in the throat of that carburetor intake boot. So you can see that's what's left of the boot on the top end. So we're going to have to clean all this stuff up. Get this out of the way. Come on. Now you want to rotate your your engine so that the piston is blocking the crankcase there and nothing can get down in there. Yeah, this all needs to be cleaned up in a bad way. Put a few screws in so that I don't misplace where they go. Alright. So from here, there's a couple different designs on this. Uh, and I've never seen this particular one. So Homelite experimented with the, the plastic intake manifold that's underneath this little tin shroud. Uh, the first mounting was just two screws. This has the two big ones that I thought I'd see, and then there's these two little ones off on the side. Uh, like I say, I've never seen this setup before, so we're going to take these off. In the end, they put four screws of the same size. I think they were a 1032. They might be an 832, but to hold it down tight. So they obviously had some problems with these things staying sealed. But this doesn't look like it's ever been apart, to be quite honest. Not down to this level. Because the hose still has the, the white marking on it, and that's signature home light. So the fact that it lasted this long, this is I think it's a 1976 model based on that lot number. That's a lot of damn years ago. And I don't even know if you guys can hear it. I do have the radio on in the background and I turned it down because there's a, a small but uh, huh, persistent group of users out there that like to give me crap every time that the radio is playing in the background. One guy said turn down the noise. I really wanted to come back with something more smart alecky than what I did, but what's the point, right? Doesn't matter. I like to listen to a little bit of music. A little classic rock when I'm working out here. Just makes it more fun. You guys can't hear it. Billy Idol's on right now. So, all right. I'm gonna restate, or I'm gonna correct myself. I think somebody's been in here. To the best of my knowledge, Homelite did not use silicone on these. The gasket is normally sufficient, so that's gonna all get cleaned up and put back the way it should be. The gasket doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad at all. I don't know if somebody discovered a, an air leak there at some point, or perceived air leak, I don't have no idea. Alright, we don't need to go a hell of a lot further to do what we need to do with this thing. Uh, I think let's get the clutch off, just because we can, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and that will be it for teardown. And I won't come back to this until I've got the parts cleaned up and I've got everything that we need to put it back together in in the shop here. I say I wish I had uh, cranked it over this morning when I was looking at it because I, I came out here nice and early before heading out to work to try and get stuff ordered so that I'd give sellers enough time to ship it over the, you know before the weekend. So if I don't have a clutch somewhere hiding in my stock of garbage, we may have to wait a week or so to, to completely put this back together. And we're certainly not going to do much until we get a new, uh, new intake boot. Okay, so you can use a rattle gun on these. You can also just use a big breaker bar. It's not nearly as much fun with the breaker bar you got to put your back into it, but we'll give it a shot here and see if that'll take it loose. 
some of these things it's amazing how damn tight they get over the years others it just spins right off so the tool that I'm using sorry I just grabbed that this is another home light tool that's their flywheel tool fits most of their saws almost any of them that have starter Paul studs spacing is the same so on this one this is for holding it and obviously this side has the, the push bolt and that's for pulling it so where I just I don't need to pull the flywheel got no reason to at this point uh, so I'm just going to use that as a holding tool to hopefully get this clutch off and remember that these things are a reverse thread and they can get garbage in them over the years I want this tool to seat properly there it goes alright oh that's going to be a good one alright we'll use some physics here let's see if that makes a difference There we go. That's a shame about that clutch because it wasn't worn out. You can see that the there's plenty of wear surface left here. And really until the wear line gets down here by the the tops of the, the letters, it's not even close to shot. So it's a shame that this one bit the dust. And this doesn't have any thrust washers on the inside. That sprocket, pretty well worn. I wouldn't in good conscience. I mean, you might get another chain out of that, but what's going to end up happening is your tension won't be constant. As it rolls over, it's going to pull tight, droop, pull tight, droop. It's not going to be constant when it's worn that badly. So. That and the clutch are going to go right where they belong, in the garbage can. The bearing and the race are still good. And that race is half seized to the crank, which means... Ah, something's gotten up in there. Whether it's cutting oh, stringy grass or something like that. That does not want to come off. But I want it out of there. So I can do this cleanup right. kind of stuff you run into, guys. You never know what's going to jump up and give you a little hassle. I have no idea what that's hung up on. In general, you don't want to hammer on crankshafts, so I'm not going to hit this hard at all. I'm going to spin that nut on there to protect it, so you can get that race to move. That little bit of what I just did isn't going to hurt a damn thing. Wow. Oh, my. I don't know what got in there. <laughs> you guys aren't going to believe this. The... I don't even know how the hell that happens. The uh, steel cage that's supposed to encapsulate the crankshaft seal is missing. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that, but you see how the garter spring is visible there? There's no way in hell. Son of a bit. You know, 
I think somebody installed the crankshaft seal upside down. That's exactly what they did. I, wow. That is truly a new one. I have never seen an upside down crankshaft seal on one of these saws before. That blows me away a little bit. I can't even fathom how that seemed like a good idea. Wow. Okay. Was not expecting that. Based on that, we're going to pull the flywheel. Because if it's that way on this side, too, I kind of want to know about it. This tool is really, really neat. You can get the uh, all the kits on eBay and most of the, the small engine suppliers like Bailey's and Madsen's, I think they sell one too. That's just a square plate of steel. I've got one up there. I'll pull it down in just a second. That has bolts, but the downside to those, you got to pull these studs out and not lose the pawls and springs and all of that. This original tool is pretty nice because I can do it this way. And use everything while it's still in place. All right. just reef with a rattle gun or you'll break something. Or mushroom the ends of the crankshaft. This thing is being persistent. Bite one. Okay. Now, Here's a sign that I look for. A little tip. See all the sawdust that's built up around here? There is absolutely zero reason for that to be there unless your crank seal is leaking. Because this isn't an area that's going to get fuel spilled down behind it. I mean, you really got to be doing something wrong if you manage to get it past your starter cover, past the flywheel, and back here. So all this buildup of stuff leads me to believe that crank seal had a slow leak. So this is going to get new seals on both sides. That'll be a different episode. I got to get all this stuff cleaned up, and I think that's that's when I'll come back to you guys is when we're actually ready to start putting things back together and. Uh, reassemble this saw so that's it for part one that's a disassembly however long this video is that's how long it takes to get a saw down to the point where you can do crank seals and an intake boot and all that sort of stuff uh, a quick note on crank seals uh, I probably ought to do a video on them separately maybe I will I do not typically pull the oil engine apart to replace those seals. If you're very careful you can use a small screwdriver like this and tap in past the seal get underneath the metal lip and pop them out from here and save yourself all the trouble of going around that. These crankshafts are hard. The surrounding metal is much softer than the crankshaft. You can damage both but if you're careful doing it like this uh, I would say only about one out of 50 do I have a, enough of a problem with it. I've got to stop and take the whole engine apart. So, All right, folks, that's enough for this episode.